Hello, David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. All right, we're, we're here for an interesting discussion. Now, I know we've got a little bit of wait, depending on when you see this video, for No Time to Die. But as we wait, we, we, we start to think of things, right? Our imagination starts to run wild. That's just what a Bond fan does. And since this channel really is about brands and style and, well, we had to kind of run our imagination into that order. So we started to contemplate Bond 26. Who knows when it's going to arrive? Who knows what it's going to be about? Who knows who Bond will be in Bond 26? But let's think about that. Imagine, if you will, that we were hired by some crazy, crazy wish as the costume designer for Bond 26. What are the type of clothing? What are the type of brands that we would gravitate to for those that follow the Bond lifestyle? Our, our sartorial minds would start to click and whirl and we could start to dream and wait a minute, we can now pick? We're not at the, the whim of somebody else, albeit who have done uh, a very, very great job with the choices thus far. I mean, I'm surrounded by them. But no, this is our choice. This is our pick for Bond 26. All right. So I had to have some parameters because you just can't go, I want Bond to wear. We need to have somebody in mind. I mean, that's how costume designers start. They really start with not just the script and the environment, they think about the actor. And so we had to choose an actor. Now, this is the uh, argument point. This is where I start to get lots of fun little comments below, but I'm just going to choose because I know it's a, a popular choice for many people. And for me as well, we're gonna choose Henry Cavill. And Henry over here, um, you know, he's paid his dues. Uh, what a Superman he is. Very charming, very nice in real life as well from what everybody says, down to earth. Excuse the pun, I just said Superman. But my gosh, he can do action, he looks the part, and uh, you know, he's got some acting chops as well. So let's choose him for Bond 26 just for this video. Relax, this is not the final pick. They'll probably choose somebody that we don't even know their name yet. But Let's choose Henry for this discussion because we're gonna be outfitting Henry as Bond. All right, all right, so here we go. Now, I'm gonna be talking about kind of Henry in a casual Bond item. So let's start with actually what I'm wearing. I am wearing a Billy Reed shawl top, a shawl sweater. Now, here's what I like about this, and, and why would I put Bond in something like this? Um, this could be an action-oriented scene, or quite frankly, it could be Bond just relaxing. I, I want more of those Bond kind of homey feelings, or it could be just Bond kind of traveling to and from where he's not overtly dressed up. But here's why I like this item. First of all, Billy Reed has obviously had a history with some of the Bond films with Skyfall. You know, we've talked about that ad nauseum. But what I love about this is the performance of this top. First of all, you could see the way it fits. All right, this is a medium. I'm a 40, 31 right here. It fits me perfectly. It's not shrunk wrapped, right? It's not too tight, comment people. Uh, it fits really good, but it feels amazing. It is a blend of cotton and poly. Do not be afraid of poly. And I'm not talking about the parrot. But polyester has changed its ways. It's repented, if you will. So this is incredibly soft. And look at these. It's got those kind of gun military elbow patches that you see on a lot of, you know, military commando kit. So it's got a very subtle nod to his military roots. The way it fits, um, and even this color. This color is like a, a Loden, very neutral green. Obviously a little darker than what you see in the Massimo Alba over here, but this quilted pattern harkens back to a lot of what you've seen on Barber um, and a lot of other brands where this quilter pattern is just, to me, it's very heritage. It's, it's very traditional. But the cut of this, right, you know, because it's not obviously slouch or anything like that, is of a modern cut. So Bond, to me, and Henry in Bond 26 would be the perfect blend of both modern and traditional wear. You've got these two buttons here that fasten it. And again, it's very comfortable. I'm wearing this without any shirt underneath or a t-shirt. You could pair it with something else. But to me, this is this is a Bond item. This is, if I saw Bond walking in this where with a pair of uh, khakis or even blue slacks, I would be like, ah, 
That's a James Bond top. I need to find that top, and you know that you would too. Two other things I'm going to throw in pretty lightly because we're going to talk more about this in a whole other video is I want to see Bond in more blazers. I mean, here we've got one from Benson and Clegg that's been made for me. We're going to be talking about this, like I said, in another video, but it's double breasted, right? It's got these traditional gold buttons. It's got that beautiful, beautiful military blue. And so I want to see, especially Henry can pull that off with his broad chest. I want to see him in a double breasted blazer. He's done it in other films and it looks great. He looks like Bond, harkens back to Roger Moore. We need a little bit more of that, a little more double uh, bla blazer. And I want to throw a bit of Fleming into Bond 26. So I want Bond to wear loafers without laces. Yes, just a simple loafer. It doesn't have to be anything fancy um, as far as uh, broguing or uh, tassels or anything like that. Just a simple slide on because Bond, the Fleming that Bond created, he no like. He no like ties. And these are very comfortable. You know, you just slide them on. They're, they're kind of slipper slash shoes. And a lot of brands could really carry the torch of both Fleming, both traditional and modern. So those are my choices. But something occurred to me. Yes, yeah, something occurred to me. This is the Bond community, and it's a sartorial style community. And I, I don't want to do this on my own. This is, this is too important of a decision. It's Bond 26. So what I thought I would do is reach out to some of my other friends in the style community and ask them the simple question, what would you choose for Bond 26 and why? Well, let's see what they had to say. Hey guys, it's Harris with Dressing Like Bond. I am here to pick out a casual outfit for the upcoming Bond 26. I'm going with a bike chase outfit. Now I know what you're saying. Harris, didn't we just get a bike chase? Yes, we had one in Quantum. We had one in Skyfall. We're gonna have one in No Time to Die. I don't count that yet because we haven't seen it. But I want a bike chase where Bond is given a motorcycle equipped by Q Branch. Therefore, he thinks about what he is going to pack, right? When he goes on his trip, wherever it might be, maybe Italy, maybe France, fingers crossed France. Um, but this is what I'm gonna go with. I think it's really classically British and I think it's also very stylish as well. So up first is this awesome Bell Staff motorcycle jacket. It's in a navy wax cotton, and then I'm gonna pair it with these black Bell Staff motorcycle pants. I think it's a really cool edgy combo, but also, again, remains classically British. And we're gonna round it off, of course, with this, you know, kind of like the gray roll neck that I'm wearing right now. This one's from John Smedley, and I'm gonna pick John Smedley for Bond 26 and go, go back to that quintessential British knitwear brand. And of course, you know, it's Harris. I don't do videos, I don't do anything or any clothes without Crockett and Jones. So we're gonna go with these killer Crockett and Jones, tan, brown, suede, kind of outdoors, outdoorsy boots. Uh, and it's got a really killer Vibram sole there on the bottom and be perfect for a motorcycle and perfect for kind of walking around of where he is. And then, of course, you've gotta harken back to the king of cool and that's Steve McQueen and go with these awesome personal Steve McQueen's folding sunglasses. I hope you guys liked it and uh, fingers crossed for a killer bike chase in Bond 26. Hi, I'm Matt Spacer of Bond Suits. For Bond 26, I would like to see Bond return to his British stylistic roots and wear bespoke clothes again, particularly from brands who had already tailored him in the past. Anthony Sinclair, who tailored Sean Connery for his six original Bond films, deserved the honor of putting Bond in his ginger jacket once again. I would like to see Bond back in midnight blue mohair, and I've always been partial to the peak lapels that Lazenby and Brosnan frequently wore in their Bond films. Other details like gauntlet cuffs and rope shoulders would be welcome as well. English was spoke defined Bond's look for over two decades, and as close as Tom Ford comes to recreating the styles of Savile Row, such a British character should once again be wearing the real deal and the clothes of his own country. I also want to see Bond's English bespoke shirt makers, whether it's Frank Foster or Trouble Nasser, return to the Bond series again. Frank Foster made shirts for Sean Connery, George Lazenby, and Roger Moore, as well as for many other actors in the Bond films. Turnbull and Astor also made shirts for Sean Connery, as well as Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig for their Bond films. The pleated royal dress shirts that Frank Foster made for the Bonds are amongst my favorites. That is what I'm wearing here.
Cotton voile is a lightweight, highly breathable fabric that stays crisp and wrinkle free. So it has the performance that Bond requires. A midnight blue bow tie from Trouble and Aster, along with a white pocket square, completes this look perfectly. It's about time that the hat returned to Bond's wardrobe too. The name's Barbeau, Kyle Barbeau. Friends and loved ones have asked me, Kyle, how would you dress James Bond in James Bond 26? After Daniel Craig is gone and Henry Cavill and Michael Fassbender or you are in the role. No, it's not gonna be me. But how would you like to see James Bond dressed? Nobody's asked me that, but it's something that I have opinions on. Today, I'm gonna to share them with you. I'm gonna start with the basics. The foundation of the James Bond wardrobe is the suit. James Bond is the suited hero. The first thing I would like to see James Bond wear in James Bond 26, whatever the title is, it doesn't have to be the first thing he wears in the movie, but the first thing that I would pick out for the new actor would be a gray sharkskin suit, a blue Turnbull and Asser shirt, and a blue Turnbull and Asser grenadine tie. First door I'm knocking on if I'm designing those costumes is Turnbull and Asser. It's about time they came back to the Bond franchise. They're just such a traditional English institution. They should constantly be dressing Bond. That's where James Bond, if he was a real man, would shop. So I would put Bond in a gray shark skin suit with a blue shirt and a blue grenadine tie. I'm kind of taking some inspiration. This is almost exactly what Bond wears to the Junkanoo and Thunderball. But even though that was in 1965, I think that would look great in 2025 on Michael Fassbender, Henry Cavill, or me. This one happens to be from Xenia, but everybody makes a great sharkskin suit. Tom Ford could come back. Um, another tailor like Mason and Sons could make it for that actor. I just think that is the Bondian, or at least the cinematic Bondian suited look. Let's not forget that after Bond takes off his suit jacket and throws it on the coat rack in Miss Moneypenny's office, he's got his trusty shoulder holster. Hello, thank you David. Since Casino Royale we've seen an increase in the amount of casual items we see Bond in. We see him less now formally dressed from start to end and have casual elements in between. All of them are smart casual and classic in their appearance. With that in mind I think this will trend will continue into Bond 26 and beyond so I would like to see Bond dress in more British classic heritage brands. And with that in mind, I'd like to offer John Smedley as my suggestion for Bond 26. Now, John Smedley has been around since 1784, so it is a well-established British brand. And we've seen them used in Bond films previously, the latest being Skyfall, where he was wearing this, the black merino wool bobby v-neck pullover. But they offer just much more than just the pullover. They have t-shirts, polo shirts, jackets, mock neck jumpers, full roll neck jumpers, and also the cardigan, which we like from Quantum. With that in mind, um, these are classic elements that Bond would automatically gravitate to, but they're also available in a variety of different materials. So for instance, we've got the merino wool uh, from the Bobbies, we've got cashmere available for some of their thicker pieces and also a staple for James Bond, Sea Island cotton. Now all of these would work for a variety of different climates so we could see Bond in a polo shirt in Sea Island cotton in a tropical environment, maybe in a merino wool pullover on the streets of London and then maybe like a thick cashmere element for winter environments where he's gone skiing for instance. The versatility also, because these are really good layering pieces, you could put a polo shirt and have then a v-neck over the top for slightly chillier weather, but not necessarily so cold that you need a very thick jumper. And the versatility is a key factor because Bond will be packing, not necessarily knowing where he's going from one destination to the next. So I think that's going to be a key th factor as well, and John Smedley would be able to provide that for him. I think the other thing that we need to consider is the colouring. 
Bond is obviously partial to the darker colours, so for instance this is charcoal or the black that we've seen previously, but I'd also like to see him in some more um, lighter colours, so for instance maybe this blue that I'm wearing, um, for more sort of summery weather but not necessarily tropical. That will help him to blend in into his, his environment. But also I'd like to see him wear some reds as well, like this uh, Bordeaux colour from John Smedley. So I think that rounds that up. Um, that's my suggestion for John Smedley. I hope you approve. Thank you. Hey everyone, Lorenzo here from Omega Bond Watches. I've been tasked with the job of picking the watch for Bond 26. And it was not an easy choice as there's plenty of options that Omega has right now that I think could fit the bill. However, I really thought about the fact that I'm a little tired of seeing the Diver 300M and I would love to see the return of the Planet Ocean. Um, I feel like it's been a while since we've had that watch on Bond's wrist. And even when we did see it in Skyfall, it was just for a quick moment. And I decided to go with a blue face version this time of the third generation Planet Ocean. It's an 8900 caliber movement, master coaxial, and it's a steel on steel with a liquid metal ceramic bezel. I just think this watch is a great looking watch. Um, I think it would be a great add to the collection if we're going with a standard Omega model. In my heart, I think we'll get another Bond made model. But if we were to pick from the current line, this is the one I'm going with. And I don't think many people will be disappointed. Um, the size though is a 43.5 millimeter. So it is a little bit bigger than the current No Time to Die diver. Which I think I want that big presence on the new Bond's wrist, I want it to draw attention. I want it to be demanding of being noticed. So uh, that was my pick. And of course we can't talk about a watch without talking about gadgets. Now, I don't know if we're gonna see a shield popping out of the watch. Here's looking at you, Luke Taggart. Shield? Mm, I don't think so. But I digress. A gadget I would like to see though is the EMP pulse on the watch. I think it would be something really practical for Bond and something that could get him out of a sticky situation. Um, that would be my pick as far as seeing a gadget. However, if we don't get a Bond watch gadget in Bond 26, I'm not going to be too distraught over it. I think it's something that needs to fit into the storyline and if it doesn't then I don't need it. But Here's hoping that they do find a way to incorporate some sort of gadget into the movie. Hello everyone, I'm Pete Brooker from Tailors With Love. How are we all doing today? So I've been assigned a task of choosing a product or garment that James Bond would wear for Bond 26. A garment that could either be accessorized or augmented in some way. And I've always liked the garments that Bond can use tactically, whether it's a reversible jacket, um, or just concealing a tracking device in the heel of his shoe. I think having a blade at the front of the shoe or some blade that can shoot out of a shoe feels a bit underhand and something something of villainy like a Rosa Club would use or the guy who was too stupid to have fun in Roadhouse, for example. However, I do like the idea of having some like blades or hacksaw blades in the lapels of the suit jacket as described in Colonel Sun, one of the continuation novels by Robert Markham. And if you'll indulge me, I'd like to just read you a small passage. A packet containing the midget transmitter had been awaiting Bond when he checked in at the hotel and he had duly installed it in the compartment Q Branch had made for it in the heel of his left shoe. A miniature picklock was fitted into the right heel and two wafer-thin tungsten steel hacksaw blades, hardly less pliable than the cloth itself, in the lapels of his charcoal green mohair suit. So how cool is that? So like that idea, I've also been playing with an idea where you can have a jacket that changes colour to suit its environment. So you can blend in to his surroundings without slipping into invisible car, die another day territory. And I have it on good authority by speaking to a gentleman over at the Innovation of Fashion for blah de blah de blah blah that you can get shirts composed of electropolymers that can have interchangeable colours. So imagine uh, the receptionist from Total Recall when she does her nails. 
you can do that but with a shirt or a t-shirt or a jacket and i think i like the idea of having some camo filter so bond can blend in when he's in the jungle doing something like that might be quite cool and lastly I was speaking to a lady who did the costume design for The Foreigner with Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan just last night. And she said that Jackie Chan, when he was doing his fitting for his jacket, he had this army jacket that had this uh, detachable hood. And he, had, he was playing with it, he was improvising with it when he put it on, he would detach the hood. And then, uh, if I give you an example, and then he would, then wrap the hood around someone else's head and, <laughs> and then knee him to the knee him to the grill. Just little things like that, I think, can be used quite well. And you can <laughs> detach a hood and then wrap it around your arm. And Bond's done things like this before when he's had to shield part of his bodies in knife fights, like in the stairwell fight for Casino Royale. So hopefully, there's some something there for you to entertain. But that's it from me. Ciao, Mickey Mouse. Gentlemen, amazing choices, fun choices. I loved how everybody approached what they would dress Bond in for Bond 26 in a very different way based on a couple of things, based on obviously their preference and what they like, but also based on the fact of how they visualize the next Bond. Henry, thank you very much for letting us use you as the mannequin today, the inspiration, the, uh, the foundation from which these things flowed. But, all right, I've got a, I've got a final question. Yes, you, yeah, it, no, not behind you. You, you the one watching, I'd like to know, what would you choose? What brands would you choose? What items would you choose? What do you want to see Bond wear in Bond 26? Listed below, I will read every single comment. I don't care how many there are, but I really am curious about people, you know, their, their gravitational pull to style in the next Bond film. And it's a clean slate. It's a clean slate. Nothing has been decided yet. So we've got nothing but clear imagination ahead. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. This has been David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. We'll see you real soon. Take care. And he had duly installed it in the compartment Q branch had made in it in the la la. Bollocks. I can't even fucking read. I think you are a natural, but... I'm not a natural, am I? I'm no Zaritsky, exactly. That's why he gets the big bucks. Exactly. Fucking shit. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.